How was your 2021? Welcome back to After Hour Happy Hour. We are your chaotic but cathartic co-hosts. I'm Sharon. I'm Vicky. I'm Jamila. Happy last week of December 2021. Goodbye to a year that I will never miss. And happy early new year. Today's episode, we're going to be talking all about things that happened in 2021, what our goals will be for 2022. You get the vibe. We did this last year. So let's get started. So let's kick it off our first question, Vicky. Describe 2021 in three words and describe three words that you think 2022 will be. Depressed F fuck. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> solid. Very accurate. Pretty solid wrap up right there. Um, 2022, not depressed anymore. Uh. I want that for you too. <laughs> and all of us. I'm trying to think what the freak happened in 2021. <laughs> I was going to say trauma, change, and depression. Really? <laughs> Dude, I feel like because I live by myself and I had so much time to think, I unlocked so much trauma. But aren't you also having a great time? Yes and no. Oh, okay. Well, we could get into that. Okay. What about 2022 then? That's a good question. I don't know what I want from 2022. Hot as fuck. Oh, no. Rich as fuck. Actually, I'll take both of those. Wait. No, just hot, rich. One more. Hot, rich, sane. Ha. Hot, rich, and sane. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Damn, we suck. I mean, <laughs> 2021 just sucked for us. Um, My three words for 2020, 2021, probably depressed, depressed, and depressed. <laughs> just kidding. I don't know. Um, Depressed, trauma, <laughs> and anxiety. I don't know. Okay, what about 2022? Okay, what I plan for 2022 is healing, gains, and success. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how about all jokes aside, is there anything in 2021 that you are kind of grateful for happen or for? Oh, moving to Korea was the best thing I've ever done for myself. Even though I was depressed, it's fine. When am I not? <laughs> <laughs> Even though I said, you know, depressed, ass fuck and stuff, I'm still thankful that I'm able to unlock the style of myself that sounds weird but at least i know what my lowest can be and what will help me to bring up from that so i'm so grateful for being a lot more in touch with my emotions and understanding that side of myself more so that's my personal thing and then i think my other thing is definitely this podcast slash content because this was the year that we grew our community a little bit more so really grateful that this helped me solidify that media production slash content is where I want to be professionally. And it's made me realize that if I'm doing this, can't even call it a job because it's something I'm really passionate about. It's something that I really could see myself doing for a long time. Snaps to Hell that yeah. one. Sharon? Uh, basically along the similar lines, like, as shitty as 2021 was, I think it made me realize how much more empathetic I will be in the future. Like, I think mental health was always really important to me. But then knowing what I went through this year, I feel like I understand people's struggles in a way different way than I thought I did before. And I think that makes me more appreciative of like the kind of person that I want to be moving forward. As shitty as my professional aspect of life was, I think it has made me realize that there's something out there that probably sets my soul on fire. And I'm glad that I uh, don't find joy in working a typical tech work life. And then I think you guys and like our podcast was my anchor in 2021. Like without it, I don't know how I would have like let out my emotions because I typically don't. So I'm very thankful for that. And I got to shout out um, my boys too. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for BTS, I don't know. 
yeah, you guys and the podcast and content was definitely my anchor of 2021 too. You guys. Actually, the thing is, I know you guys would have been here no matter what, but if I have podcasts, I actually don't know what where, to look forward to. Yeah, like there's nothing to look forward to. Greed. But also, I feel like because of the podcast, like sometimes we have episodes where we don't plan on them getting like really deep and then they have been. So I feel like it kind of forces us or forced us to talk about it and at least let it out. And then yeah. people were able to relay. And then so, yeah, it's just great. Wow, that was a good start to our 2021 recap. <laughs> Okay, so on that topic, did you guys have any goals that you wanted to complete for 2021? And did they happen? We're limiting it to top three if you have a lot. Yeah, I wrote this in my personal journal. I had three goals. I don't think I achieved any of them. One, glow up. Two, blow up. Three, load up. Hey, you blew. We blew up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Like a lot. You don't need to glow up. You're hot already. So like take that out. No, no, and so no. you just need to load up. <laughs> no, the no, the thing with glow up is I didn't mean it in just an aesthetic kind of thing. I meant it with how I felt and how consistent I am with gymming. And that's the glow I want. Cause you know, obviously I I mean I still care about aesthetic to a certain way, but I think 2020 was when I started to get into fitness more. And 2021 was the year where I really wanted to be consistent and feel good all the time. Be active. And that's kind of like my version of glow up. I thought I didn't write anything for 2021 goals, but I just found it. And I'm laughing because <sighs> I don't think anything happened. Okay. Read 10 pages of a book every day. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> Work out three to five times a week. Proper push up by end of year, deadlift a plate. No, no, neither of those <laughs> happened. <laughs> Practice gratitude daily. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, listen to at least one podcast a week. I, mean, I might have done that. Launch my YouTube channel. That didn't happen. Uh, literally stop saying I can't spend money as a limiting belief. I kind of did that. I kind of nice. did that. Now your thing is I've been spending too much money. <laughs> <laughs> Growth. I feel like some of these I did in the first like maybe two to three months of 2021. And then shit hit the ceiling and then everything just went down from there. So I don't recall anymore. 20 2021 was basically just traumatic that I can't remember things. Vicky's turn. I kind of meshed 2020 and 2021 together. Same. Like, I keep thinking COVID happened in the beginning of 2021, but it happened 2020. See, not the case for me because I feel like 2020 was actually still not bad for me. I actually felt like Agreed. I was improving and stuff, but 2021 was just purely emotional distress. Depression. Stress. Oh, yes. See, I should really be more grateful for 2021 because I, f I feel like it was a good year, but... Let me just not. I'll be grateful. It was. A, I was just gonna comment. I feel like Jam and I low key make you think that you're not okay because no, we're so. Oh, okay. <laughs> so sorry about that on on my behalf. I'll, I'll explain <laughs> later. But like, I did have three goals that I wrote because at the beginning of the year I was still doing therapy, and this was something that we did. I forgot that we did that. <laughs> and so now that I'm reading it, I'm like, I did a good job. <laughs> My first goal was to create more. So like designing, filming, all these things was to create more, which I've been pretty good at. What me and my therapist did is like write a goal and then how it makes me feel and the actions that I need to achieve it. And so the actions that I put was like to document more or like make more visuals and then do my own passion projects, which all three of those I have been doing. And then my second goal was to do more and do better. And that meant like seeking improvement in myself, which I unlocked way too many traumas. So I'm going to say, yes, I have been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and then my last one is to reach out more, which this one I kind of flopped on. It was like to respond to people faster and then like check in on one person a week. The amount of people that I've ghosted. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I would randomly throughout the months have like a random spurt of me like, I love people. I'm going to check in on all my friends. And then we talk for three days and I just never respond. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just get random spurts of serotonin. Okay. <laughs> but those are my three goals. <laughs> That's not bad. You got two out of three. Sharon got two out of six. I got one out of three. Nice. Okay. So then the next question was, 
Toxic traits that we had this year and how to get rid of it. One that I had at the top of my mind is not eating. Oh, uh, soft spot. Dude, I'm telling you, something's happening in my brain or something because I have lost all appetite for food. Like, I don't want to eat. So then I get to a point where I'm hungry. And then like once you miss your, it's like sleep cycle. If you miss your REM, like it fucks you up. I feel like it's the same with food. If you miss your hours of eating window that you're supposed to typically eat, it just fucks you up even if you do eat. So that's a toxic trait that I developed. My plan is to go into 2022 with things that I should make or like things like food I should eat and then kind of making a schedule for myself of when I should eat and stuff. That's like one big toxic thing that happened this year. That's a good one. Because you love food. Or you used Not to. anymore. I mean, that's that's when you're kind of alone or living and stuff. But when you go out with friends, is it still that bad? Yeah. Really? I yeah. thought you said social eating makes it better. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it is. But then if let's say I'm hungry and I start eating. Once there's food in my system, I start feeling sick. And that's not a mental thing. That's like an actual physical thing. I have thing. no idea at this point. I thought it was a mental thing, but now it affects me physically. So I don't know. According to Google, it could be because <laughs> I've just gone so long period of like malnourishing myself. So now I just need to reintroduce like a healthy diet into my system. If that doesn't work, then I'll go see a doctor. What kind of doctor do you see? A nutritionist? No, I think I would have to start with like gastroenterologist and then a neurologist if it's like neuro. I mean, didn't you see the gastro something something? And they that was from my SIBO. So is your SIBO fixed now? Yeah. Did you follow up? No, I'm chilling from the SIBO. Okay, cool. Well, we got that fixed in 2021. Yeah, Thanks, guys. that's one step in your health. That's fine. Uh, you're right. Yeah. Okay, your guys' toxic traits. This is my, I'll get into it, but. I just think that my constant state is depressed and then there's days that are happy. Oh. That's my biggest discovery of 2021. Like, I don't know, for healthy people, I guess, they're just standard. And then my constant state is depressed. Like if you ask me what I feel, I don't want to be here. But then there are days where I'm like, like yesterday, oh, like, okay, this is why I want to stay alive, you know? <gasps> so then that's my toxic trait where I let depression run me and I'm just like, I hate it, I da, 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 but I'm trying to find more reasons to stay alive. Yes, I can be depressed, but that doesn't mean I should let it run me. I will find reasons to be happy. When did this start happening? Maybe within the last like two, three years when I'm like, okay, I have a problem and I need to see someone for it. And then I realized that like, no matter how hard I try to improve myself, I always revert back to like, oof, I'm in an episode feeling. And then there's like random ups and downs type of thing. Do you yourself know what could change that? If I have happy moments, then I like feel better. Yeah, you feel better. But do you know how you could change to a state where your constant state is not everyone's gonna be constantly happy, but at least you're not your constant normal state isn't depression and it becomes there are certain days where I'm sad or certain days where I'm depressed. That's my biggest discovery is I don't have that. It's like my state is I lack serotonin. And so I'm always like, I don't wanna be here is my that's my level. And then I have to find reasons to get to the point where I'm like, okay, like I'm happy. Yeah. So my question is, do you think you know yourself how you can get out of that or change that mindset? No. I'll answer for Vicky because I didn't know you were like this because I'm the same way where I feel like you won't be in a constant state of feeling like you have depression and then there's good days until yeah. it becomes, oh, majority of my days are good days and I occasionally have bad days. But I'll never be that. I'm the opposite. Yeah, until you get to the reverse. Like you think you'll never get there? Yes. <laughs> Ever? I, I feel like it's not like a bad thing to me in a sense. The way I see it is like I have no reason to be sad. 
objectively speaking, 2021 was really good for me. Like how you guys said that both of you guys were having a really hard time. But for me, like I got to do so much that not a lot of people get to say in their lifetime they'll get to do. And I'm very grateful for it. But even though I got those opportunities, even though I'm doing what I've always wanted to do, I still feel not happy. So then I've accepted the fact that like it's like a chemical thing. You know, that's my toxic trait where I didn't accept that. And so now that I have, it's easier for me to be happy because I'm just like, okay, like I feel shitty and I feel like I don't want to be here, but let me find reasons to be instead of like continuing down that rut. Two questions. Number one, have you talked to your therapist about this specific thing? And two, are you? I slipped my second question, slipped my mind. Are you okay? (laughs) No. Because I'm opposite. So then I think this is so intriguing to me because for me, is I'm always happy or there's always, ha- but is there some days of bad? So I'm just trying to imagine if that's like me, like how do you accept it? Like, do you think you're happy accepting that? Yes. I think you should talk to a therapist or a psychiatrist. <laughs> First of all, I think you should talk to a psych. <laughs> Hold on, Vicky. I think you should talk to a professional about this and see if it's to the extremity of needing medication. You know, I've considered that. Oh, that's so interesting. That feels so extreme, though, because it's not like I'm going to yeet myself off Earth, okay? Right, Let's right, throw right, that right. proclaimer off, out there that, like, I'm fine. Every day, like, nothing makes me feel, in a sense. Yes, I can get annoyed, or yes, I can get certain things, but my, like, neutral state is nothing. It's not, like, joy. It's not, like, oh, yay, like... I'm fine. It's just nothing. But then there are days like yesterday was, I'll get to this later, but like probably one of the top couple of days of my life. I can remember those top 10, top whatever days because they're so significant of happiness in my brain. So then if your every single day was like that, do you think it would become the reverse where you have majority happy days, but occasional not happy days but i can't imagine that would you want that though but also it feels weird because i've never had that my whole life like feeling that the way i would yesterday my whole life that's what i'm saying is like it took me this long to to realize that like i've never always been happy like my neutral state has always like even as a kid i would be like neutral or i just don't feel So like that idea that like every day could be like yesterday is very weird and it doesn't feel like it's possible. Let's just say you're leading a life you want to. You're living freely um, in different countries. You're doing freelancing or you're working for a company, doing graphic design, you're doing your own content. Like your ideal life, do you think if you're living that, you don't think that you could say almost like every day could be very happy for you? I would still be sad because I feel like if I took my empty depression self out of 2021, I would openly say that I'm living the life that I've always wanted to live this past year. But because I just like feel nothing sometimes, I'm like, oh, I'm like sad. Because objectively speaking, like I, this year was really good for me, but I'm just, my emotions are lack thereof. (laughs) <laughs> she jam is just so intriguing <laughs> dude no i'm like in shock because this is like if i say i feel like this is like completely opposite of me yeah that's what i'm saying we're like complete opposite because i asked about a question about like ideal life if i'm living my ideal like that like that every day will be serotonin filled and it'll just be certain days that are bad I also didn't know that, Jam, you would describe yourself in the past. Like, if you were to remove 2021, you would describe you always in a happy state with occasional dips. I didn't know that was possible. Like, I thought everyone was just chilling. Maybe not like... Same! Yeah. (laughs) No. Okay, so let me tell you where... Okay, so one, I didn't know this about Vicky. So when you said it, this, this is why we, me and you, have to talk about like therapy mental health stuff okay um because i never put it like that but that's how i would describe my mental state too like my entire life maybe not too as deep as yours where like i'm constantly depressed with occasional 
ups of happiness. I would say mine's a little bit better, but I would still categorize it as like most of my days are just like, eh. yeah. And then occasional days where I'm like extremely happy. And I can also pinpoint things that have happened in my life where I have been the most happiest and everything else blends together. And the reason why I was asking questions to you is because I feel like if one day I am at a place where I think I want to be in terms of career, financially, basically doing what I think I'd want to be doing, then I like to think then my days would be good all the time. But I've never experienced that before. Like every time I think, oh, if I get a job, I'll be happy. Or if I do this, I'll be happy. And then if they do happen, I'm not constantly happy anyway. I can't think that one day I will be doing everything that I want to be doing yet still be unhappy because then I would, that would be a hard reality to hit. So I just think that one day I will be happy all the time versus it sounds like Vicky, you just, that's not going to happen kind of thing. You know, I don't know if it's a toxic trait or not. Even if I did have everything that I could ever want in life, there's still certain things that will be unanswered for me that will make me not want to be here. Dude, I'm so shook right now. I'm actually so shook. I feel like it's only really this year that I finally understood like emotions and stuff. I feel like I, not that I always lived on a constant state of like happiness. I'm always like so joyful, but I think I've always lived on a constant state of on the more positive style of things. And I have dips when I'm like stressed or I have dips when I'm sad and stuff. I remember one time when Sharon was like, oh, I was really happy during this one period. I think was it your third year or sometime yeah, your second year, third year. And I feel like at that time I couldn't fully grasp it because I was like, what do you mean? Like you're truly happy at this time? Because to me, I was more happy until I hit my load that I realized how hard happiness can come and like what happiness truly meant. So then, oh my God, I, feel, I just have so many thoughts racing because I never knew this about you guys. And I feel just feel like, like, holy. Does it make like, sense? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Like no, it yeah. finally makes sense what you guys like said before. And I understood it more, but now it just like, it, it clicks on like what you guys are saying. And I'm just like, so <laughs> like shook, like. This is what I mean by I don't think people who've gone through a really low low or understand or have experienced extreme mental health issues. Like I don't think they can ever get someone who has experienced those before, which is why I would personally never talk to my parents about this because they just won't understand. And it just so happened that this year, like Jam, you experienced one of those where I feel like you actually can fully understand. Not that if you didn't, like we wouldn't tell you about this because we still would it's just a lot easier knowing that we've all experienced it before it's like this year i finally had a comparison of what happiness and not happiness ha- is. not happy is like how we said it before is so accurate is jam's constant state is the happiness and then you realize that you take that for granted because you felt the opposite of that you know what it feels like to lose all of that but then for us it's like we always had that low and then there's random days in our lives where we're like oh shit this is what it feels like to be happy like euphoric and then everything else you just drop okay well i'm also kind of shook then because i didn't know people lived constant state of happiness yeah with occasional dips but now looking back i would characterize that as you yeah i always thought it was like constant state of like regular yeah and then you go up and then yes. down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't say like I'm constantly state of like bubbly, whatever. Although that's what I want to work towards. And I feel like I know how to get there, but I'm more on the constant state of in the positive than I am in the negative thoughts. Well, I can't relate to that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. So- hold on, hold on, hold on. I was going to say, I think this is why I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I hate expectations. Sometimes I subconsciously have high expectations like, oh, this event is going to be good. So it has to be good. And then when it doesn't meet that like bar of happiness, I get really sad about it. Okay, now this makes so much more sense to me why expectations not not mean so much to you. Because for me, I'm just like, oh, if it's like it goes like this, like most of the time it's good. But for you, it's just like, oh, I remember this event specifically because it was so much fun. Wow, this literally just clicks in my head. Like it just everything that I shared has said to me in the past four years. I, I I got it. Like, but now the words mean so much more because I understand how where she was coming from from an emotional standpoint. 
This is our friendship growing. <laughs> Remember after the concert, the next day when we were walking back to Target, I told yeah. you like, oh, I had really high expectations for some aspects of yesterday, but like I was kind of anxious the whole time. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what kind of happened that day. But now looking back, like it was an amazing four days. Like I'm chilling now. But at the time. Wait, wait, question then. Becky said the way she's feeling like this is because she just low-key questions life, you know? But then what do you think that's making you or has made you to be in the States? I do agree where like I would think that maybe there's some sort of chemical imbalance in me too. Just not as severe as Vicky's if it is diagnosable. But I also think I'm just not, I haven't reached a point where I'm content with life like there's just so many things i want to achieve and along that achievement path comes disappointment and failures and stuff like that where i like to think one day when i'm living the dream that i've been working so hard for or like going towards then i'll be happy but i also know that's like a very not good way to think like i hear all the time people are like stop thinking about the future you have to be present and like blah 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 but my head is just once i do all these things i feel like i will be happy so have you always been like this since you could my whole life? I feel like the standard is like jam where you're neutral and then you're like more happier. That That's what people aim to be. But the idea that maybe therapy or medication can get me to that is like, whoa. One comment, one question. See, after hearing this, I don't think I had depression in 2021. I just had a really, really big low. Like, I don't think what I had was depression. I take it back. I think it was just a really deep low after hearing all this. I mean, it, I'm not, I don't mean it in, like, any offense, but it's just, like, hearing what you guys go through, like, constantly for so many years. And these are the emotions that you guys have and that, yes, remember your happiest days. For me, it's like, obviously, I remember my very happy days, but I remember my saddest days. Like, I remember my saddest periods because they are so different. That's wild. So now that I hear that, I'm like, oh, I don't think I have depression, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I wonder how many people in the world are more like you, or, or I wonder if people in the world are more like you guys or more like me. Half, half. I'm constantly surrounded by media that's depression. So like I would say depressed people, but you get what you are, right? When it comes to social media. I mean, I would probably don't have an actual answer, but I'm just like curious now. I think that's why some people are just, how do I say this? Assholes? Because like there are some people who don't grasp the concept that someone else might not be okay because they've been okay their whole lives. So they shit on people who complain or are sad about things. They're like, pull up your big girl pants and like stop being a little bitch. But that's because they've never gone through something that's emotionally potentially traumatizing. Therefore, they don't get it. Therefore, they're dick. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like there's a good amount of like half-half of people who are good all the time versus people who are not. But I'm also like, do people cover it or like they don't show it because they don't even know? Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't. Ne- I would never know until today when you guys describe it like that. I've always thought that we're like maybe on the same scale. Like maybe me just higher on some days, but like me can go like really high. But I just didn't realize like we were on different scales. Like we can't even measure the same thing. Like I'm measuring kilograms. You guys are measuring in pounds. Wait, actually, never mind. That makes sense in in a way. Never mind. Because it converts. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so then, Jam, do you never, like, have you never seen that, like, expected that from us? Like, we don't give off sad vibes? No. Like, Vicky does not look sad oh, yeah. whatsoever. I think it's your ability to laugh. Yeah. I feel like it's because I've gotten so used to it that I'm, like, complacent about it. Sorry, I'll have to keep saying as wow because I'm like, <laughs> this is like a new world to me. Well, it's very new that like you're constantly happy and like you just have sad days. Yeah, but don't let this change your perspective on things either, Jan. Oh, no. Now I feel like because of hearing this, like I feel like I'm so much more grateful that I'm okay. I- I'm able to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like, unable to feel this way and I feel I w- work even harder to want to like work towards like being happy every day and really hope that whatever we do and hope that when we become successful and you guys are living your happy life I know Sharon says there's a chance but I really hope that Vicky will ever get a chance like you know like you know I really want that for you I don't want you to live in this constant state of sadness I want you to know that there's life like it could be happy every day you will be my um standard 
You're my goal, Jam. I'll be your serotonin. Yes. Yeah. You could be my <laughs> serotonin. Well, because then the thing is wh- about toxic traits. One of the toxic traits I was going to say-, say was letting my emotions get to me and like not <laughs> – not gymming and then not like filming content and just soaking well now like, it's not really a toxic trait no <laughs> it is it <laughs> is your toxic yeah trait. yeah yeah see this is like the where you th- tread on thin waters that doesn't make sense because you could tread on thin water <laughs> <laughs> fucking never mind um, I was Walk saying, on thin ice. walking on thin ice i think ice. <laughs> this is where people struggle a lot with opening up about mental health because it almost feels like you invalidate other people's emotions by like, oh, this is worse. But it's not. It's really not. Okay, I guess I can't say my is toxic because I mean, even before we had this conversation, I wouldn't say my is necessarily toxic. I think it's just learning how to overcome these things. And for me, the things I would like to change is one, not letting my emotions get in the way of my goals. Like not letting my emotions get in the way of doing things that I truly do enjoy and love. And I know you, you know, sometimes you just have to like really soak in your emotions. But I feel like in the entire year of 2021, that really happened, like where I feel like it really just kind of like stopped me from doing everything that I lo- liked. And I continue to do things that I didn't. Like the little things like, oh, I, f- I really don't want to go out with this group or like in general because I feel this way. Yeah. And if you once you do it, you feel good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I have one more about totally different. Not like discipline. I think discipline is a big thing for like you and I maybe because the whole gymming thing. Yeah. See, oh, wait, yes and no, because I know in 2020, I was super disciplined. Like I gymmed every day. I, I like, say for a GRE. So I know I can be disciplined, but it's just like the mood. I think my overall thing oh. that I want to change is but remember when I tell you guys when I'm happy I feel like I could tackle on the world I don't know if you guys ever felt that but Lou I'm happy I feel like I could do anything and I'm unstoppable and I could achieve everything but once I'm not in that like mood I just get like in my own thoughts and then I just don't want to do anything so I don't want to let emotions or negative emotions control me like that to a point where like I said affects me from reaching my goals damn is that why I've feel like I've never been able to do anything because I'm just never in the mood of I'm gonna conquer the world maybe until your procrastination kicks in and you yeah. have to <laughs> actually I don't know this is a dumb question but what's like your definition of living life to the fullest then see that's what I don't know 2021 really threw me in for a loop because Whenever I reflect on it, this was the life that I wanted to have. Being able to move to a country and I'm living rent free and everything that I have been doing is what I have wanted. So I'm just like, fuck, I don't know anymore. Because like when I did freelancing, that was really fun. When I I like am still doing passion projects with my friends and stuff, I'm literally doing all the goals that I have set for myself and like achieving it. And I just like am complacent. Well, have you achieved everything? Not like everything, but I I know I'm working in the process too. So I just, I I don't know how to answer that question. (laughs) I mean, we could talk about this for days, but like that's the same for me too. In the sense of like, I was like, oh, when I get this job, I'm going to be happy. When I, when we start our podcast, I'm going to be happy. These things have happened and I'm not happy. But then for me, what keeps me sane, I guess, is that there's still an end goal for me where like everything in my life aligns. So that's my source of happiness that I look forward that? to. Being rich, being married to the love of my life, um, having my ultimate dream job, being able to support my family, like all of these things where I'm just not there yet, right? Versus for you, it seems like there's not even that state. See, I have end goals like that. Like, obviously, I always talk about I want to be freaking rich and that would be great and stuff. And I do have like dream jobs. But my thing, I guess, that gets me is like, it's not like I'm not doing anything for it. I'm being grateful for the process that I'm in. And like, it's not like I feel like I'm not successful right now, if that makes sense. I don't know how to explain it. Fuck. <laughs> I'm doing things that should be making me happy if I take out the fact that I feel sad. Do you know what I mean? Yes. But it's fine. I've accepted that fact and we're just going to find days like yesterday. I think at this point, Vicky just needs to go back to therapy or see a psychologist. <laughs> I mean, psychiatrist. I have never actually said this, but like, 
I feel like I'm very uh, manipulative in a sense. Now that I think about my like therapy sessions, she didn't therapy me. I therapied myself and I just told her what she wanted to hear. That's not manipulative. That's just lying. That's just <laughs> deflecting. <laughs> Maybe because I was, I was so eager to have a therapist to help me that like I didn't realize maybe she wasn't the therapist for me because you know, people say that therapy is like dating you have to find someone that fits you but then for me I was in such a low that I just like anybody would have been great and then I stuck with her for so long that I kind of learned to know what she wanted kind of like what I do with my parents I learned to know what she wanted to hear and knew what she would say if I were to say certain things so then every session it would seem like I'm getting better or like oh like you're getting you're, you're doing great and like all these things I think you just haven't found the match for you which is also why maybe going to a psychiatrist would be helpful because it's like a two-in-one they're like your therapist, but also they can prescribe you or diagnose you. How do you find you. a psychiatrist? I don't know. There's a lot of things I don't know. because I mean, there's a lot of things I don't do because I don't know. Yeah, me too. You guys could be my therapist. It's fine. I'm in shook about everything. What makes you think I could be a therapist? You make me laugh all the time, Jam. You're my serotonin. I'm just your temporary band-aid. <laughs> That's See? Look, I'm laughing. <laughs> the thing is, Vicky doesn't cry either. Like, I've seen Vicky cry once, and that's because she had alcohol in her. You know that line where Hulk is like, you know what's my secret? I'm always angry. You know what my secret is? I'm always sad. <laughs> is this why I cry when I'm drunk? Because I'm always happy. Oh my god, versus when I'm drunk, I'm happy. So I'm chilling. <laughs> oh shit, dude. We're fucked up. Oh, I'm I like knew all these things, but I'm like it's like putting them into perspective where I'm like learning so much about myself too. Like wow, there's a reason why. Remember like it's like oh, what's your we had a question one time on our podcast, what's your end goal? And my answer was literally to be happy. We represent people, the different people in the world. We got you. So 2022 looks like Vicky will um seek a therapist or a licensed professional of some sort, and it looks like I should do the same. And um Jamma, were you done with your toxic traits? <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even call myself toxic. My is just behaviors I would like to change. So let's move on. Maybe we'll get into the depths of this later, but in another episode. But let's move on to um, some good things. What were some top moments of 2021? My absolute top moment has to be this podcast. And the growth that we saw this year, but also being able to talk to our listeners. There's like two people that I still talk to now that would just have like casual conversations. Aww. I have a list that I wrote down. Oh, nice. I remember these so well. Um, the day that I found out I got my job in Korea was one day. Another day was the day that I arrived into my apartment here in Korea quitting therapy even though that sh shouldn't be a happy day but in my mind I was like I quit because I'm so happy at the time you were in that moment I was so I remember that really well I even remember like quitting like that's very interesting about these days is like I remember vivid details of these days I remember the day that awe popped off like when we were I was at work when our Instagram started blowing up and we're just like holy shit like where all our hard work is paying off like this was the day finally getting my push-ups when I was doing workouts and like hitting my push-ups yesterday first snow of Seoul and getting or going to see epic high that's good that you keep track wow I think 2021 entirely was just traumatic where I like failed to remember literally 99% of the things but at the top of my mind you know what's weird some days I don't think they're like my happiest and then they become my happiest days later. One of them is the BTS concert. That whole like four days. I tell you, I had two of the best sleeps of my entire life those that week. I was just blissful. The other only one that I can remember was when Jam and I in Seattle were taking pictures outside of our friend's terrace. It was just us two and we were just being stupid. And in that moment, I was like, why am I so depressed like life is fine and i was just really happy in that moment and then everything else i literally can't remember oh my god see when you talk about this like oh my god like that was 
such a good moment too. Or when we're like in the waterfront park, and that was just like so much fun. Gasworks Park, Jamila. <laughs> Gasworks. Ah, I was called waterfront. Or like how the four days in LA, I had so much fun. I remember telling you this is actually one of the best like days of whatever. But I, it's, I just also forgot. That's good. That means most of your days are just happy, and then there's like peak moments where you have to be reminded. Yeah, I mean, most of my days of 21 are not happy, but it's just, I'm so used to, this is so out of the ordinary. Yeah. Like, 21 was out, my out of yes, the ordinary. Yes, yes. Maybe my end goal is to be Jamila. I mean, I hope I could be where I want to be at, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, we are putting 21 behind us. So we'll quickly talk about some of our goals for 2022. So what are you guys' goals? Wait, before we start, do you guys have a theme for the year? You know how people are like, oh, I have like something in general, like overarching theme for the year. Mine is year of the grind. Healing. Like physically with your stomach or like your food. Physically, mentally, emotionally, literally everything. That's a good one. Mine is self-discipline. Nice. I feel you're pretty disciplined though. I agree. Um, not as much as I would like to be. Okay. Goals. The first one is still the same one as last year, glow up. And what I mean by this is not just a physical appearance, feeling good ab- about like my fitness, feeling good about my health. Like I'm because right now sometimes I'm still thinking about calories and stuff, and stuff. I want to kind of just eliminate that if I can't and just eat what I want, like in moderation. Just live like a really healthy lifestyle and um focus not 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 only focus on fitness because i wanted to reach a certain aesthetic but also incorporating things that i really like doing or trying new things such as like boxing or i really want to incorporate dance back into kind of my this fitness kind of thing so in a nutshell that's what i mean by glow up uh second is still blow up for um our channel continue i'm not like a over next success what i mean by blow up it's just that it rhymed okay but continue to grow continue to have our podcast reach new audiences um really hope that we could connect with like more listeners like talk to them chat with them and also for when vicky comes back we make more contents like we've been talking about this literally since last year um but finally put it into action uh and also for my personal um youtube stuff personal youtube content to uh grow and and actually Maybe my fourth goal, I, I feel not really a goal, but maybe something I like is what, what what rhymes with it? Like a date, date up. <laughs> oh, like date more. Yes. Oh, b- boo up. Wait. Boo, boo yes. Up? Boo oh, up. Yeah. yeah. Like it's not really a goal, but it would be nice to have a companion because I'm just like really lonely. But I know, but it's not something I'm like actively seeking for. I know once I really work on myself and stuff, like I'll be more ready for it. But you know, I'm hoping, yeah, hoping 2022 is the year. I hope so too. I really hope <laughs> someone will come through for jam. <laughs> yes, I haven't like planned out my 2022 yet, but at the top of my head, I want to be able to do a proper push up. I want to be able to do a proper pull up. I want to be able to squat and deadlift a plate. I want to, it's very like fitness oriented, I feel like next year because my health was shit this year. I want to figure out what's wrong with my eating habits right now that's a goal that i want to fix um i want to launch my youtube my personal youtube channel i would like us to continue growing even more and then i just want to like work on myself i did nothing for my mental sanity in 2021 so this year i want or 2022 i just want to focus a lot more on that oh i want to learn a new dance every month like one dance one month oh i want to read books read at least 10 pages every day I want to dedicate at least 20 minutes every single day that stimulates my brain somehow. The amount of times that Sharon has said, yeah, 2021 is still happening, so I'm going to save it for 2022. So 2022 is the year for Sharon. I'm not starting anything good for this year. It doesn't deserve to live in this year. Like That's how bad it is. That's why I need to start in 2022, okay? I feel like I have more, but off the top of my head that I wrote the last couple of days... I really want to take care of my outer physical body beyond my face. So like I'm like very obsessed with skincare and all that stuff. And I finally got a handle on like my acne, even though I'm breaking out. But I stopped caring about like my hair, other skin and other areas. So that's one of my goals. My second one, I told Jam about this a little bit, but I started this thing called like one, two, three 
go, I forgot what I told Jam, but like every three months I want to learn something new. So for the three months, like that's all I focus on. But like my top two priority that I want to do for 2022 is to learn Korean and coding, which I've been saying that for a really long time, but I've been procrastinating and I'm just going to start in 2022. It's fine. My other one is also to read more, to read at least 10 books, books, but then three of them I said has to be useful. So not shitty (laughs) rom-coms. Yes. And then the last one is to be more accepting of content creating not being afraid to vlog in public. So here was our episode, our last episode of 2021. Even though our 2021 wasn't the greatest, hope this episode or this episode, I guess, and on a pretty good note, I discovered a lot of things new about Sharon and Vicky. Mine is still blown. Just want to say again, thanks everyone for your support and your messages and your comments. Literally, it just brings any bad day better. Yeah. I just want to add, like, actually, if it wasn't for you guys we would probably be more insane than we are. So yeah. just thank you. Not only this podcast has become a platform for us to share how we're feeling towards each other and we're still learning you know, about each other, but being able to, or you guys are able to relate to us and know that you guys are not alone and we're not alone in any of this. Anything else you guys want to add? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel like there's probably some things I want to say, but I just can't remember off the top of my head. But I think we just can't be grateful enough and actually can't wait to show you guys what we have in store for 2022 because we are finally going to be reunited as a trio. Yes! I'll just wrap it with take this episode as a sign to do your own reflection of things that you want to leave behind in 2021 and take forward in 2022. Always remember that we're a safe space, so we've got it. If you have anything you'd like to say, our DMs are always open. And we'll see you in 2022. Bye. Bye. Bye.